20 things you didn't know about the PS4? And if Microsoft does another 180, isn't that the Xbox 360? And 400 subscribers, you like me! You really like me! What's up guys, Briar Rabbit here, and today I got a few stories that I think you're really gonna enjoy. So let's jump right into it. Over the weekend, Sony released a new video. It's called 20 Things You Didn't Know About the PS4. And while there are a few things that we actually did know about the PS4 in the video, there were a few new things or things that were new to me. Uh, one of those being that the touchpad on the PS4 controller itself is actually a clickable button. I didn't know that and I was I was interested in it. Also, there's already 140 games in development for the PS4. That's pretty exciting. I'm sure that those aren't all AAA titles. I'm sure a lot of that is indie stuff. Uh, but still, I like to see that there's going to be new software pretty soon for the new console. Also, there's going to be an HDMI cable packed in with every console. That's really exciting to me, although I'm sure there's a lot of Best Buy sales guys right now saying, how are we going to sell those $100 HDMI cables? So uh, yeah, I was pretty excited to see this video. There's a link in the description of this video if you want to check it out for yourself. A couple videos ago, I talked about Xbox One and the Xbox 180 and how they pulled a lot of the feature that features that I was really excited about uh, after E3. So in an interview with IGN, Mark Witten, who is the Xbox One Chief Product Officer, talked a little bit about the family sharing and how um, people are pretty upset that that got taken away with the Xbox One's DRM. He goes on to say, if it's something that people are really excited about and want, we're going to make sure that we find the right way to bring it back. I probably should have been more clear. We took some feedback and realized that there was some stuff we needed to add to the program. To add it to the program, we had to make room. Just from a pure engineering perspective, to be able to get that work done. So what he's basically saying here is that because we removed the DRM, we couldn't we couldn't keep that family sharing stuff. And while it was a loss and we acknowledge that, we do want to put that stuff back, but we got to figure out a new way to engineer that into the software. So I think this might be somewhat of a response to the online petition telling Microsoft to put the DRM back. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm really torn about this. I don't like a lot of the policies that the Xbox One team had brought out at E3, but I also don't like the full pullback that they did after E3. I really wanted them to leave some of the cooler stuff in there, just take away some of the stuff we didn't like. And while I do respect that, that DRM was allowing them to do some of that cool stuff, I think they need to find a way to either make it an opt-in policy or find a way to include it in another way. I may sound like a broken record here, but it does seem like Microsoft is casting around. They cannot find that lifeline to hold on to with the Xbox One, and they really need to find something fast because gamers, you know, we've already kind of written them off, it feels like to me. Uh, when you compare comments in my, you know, in my YouTube channel or in 4chan or in NeoGAF anywhere, I mean, people are really upset with the Xbox and it doesn't feel like that tide is turning and something that they do has got to do that for them. They, they need to come up with something that really helps them start selling these consoles, otherwise they're going to have a lot of trouble come November. If they can't get the consoles out there, then the software isn't going to get sold they're not going to get the third party support and they're going to be in a lot of trouble. So hopefully they're going to be at San Diego Comic Con. Hopefully they can really come up with something really special to share with gamers there. The last thing I wanted to talk about today was the fact that this morning I woke up, I logged into YouTube and I saw, hey, I got 400 subscribers. And while that's a really small number in YouTube terms, to me, it's a really big number. It's 400 people that said, you know, watched a video or watched two videos and said, I'd like to see what this guy can do next. And uh, they clicked that subscribe button. And to me, I mean, that makes it all worthwhile, right? If you're making these videos out, it doesn't matter how happy you are with the videos yourself. If nobody's watching them, it doesn't really mean anything. And while I don't make any money at it, it's really, really rewarding uh, seeing those subscriber numbers grow, seeing you guys in the comments, and uh, really interacting with not just me, but each other. And that's really fun. So I just wanted to say thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hitting that like button. And thank you for getting in that comment section. And I hope that I can continue to bring you more content that you'll really enjoy. 
So that's going to do it for this video. If you guys like this video, hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe. And up on the screen are a couple of videos you might have missed, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.